Marvel's had enough of E3 taking over headlines and is taking them back, but we've also got some other rad E3 news that flew under the radar. All of that and more on this episode of Looter News. Happy Friday, everybody. It's June 21st, 2019, and this is Looter News, your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek, gaming, and pop culture. I am your host, Josh Ball. Let's get into the news, shall we? Now that E3 is over and all the attention on it is beginning to settle down, Marvel has eagerly spun their magical PR machine back up with a slew of announcements and news this week in preparation for a lot of fun stuff to come. We'll kick things off with some of the smaller news first, starting with some discussion from Kevin Feige this week about a certain actor that's kind of... Well, he's everywhere right now, and he's pretty breathtaking. Between his roles in John Wick 3, Toy Story 4, Always Be My Maybe, Bill and Ted Face the Music, and upcoming the upcoming game, Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, of course, we're talking about none other than Keanu Reeves. Apparently, Kevin Feige was asked this week if Reeves would ever join the other stars of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially since there's been a major rumor recently that Keanu is in negotiations for the upcoming Marvel movie, The Eternals. Interestingly enough, Feige revealed that Marvel has talked to him for, quote, almost every film they've made, end quote. That's 22 films and they couldn't figure out how to make it work with Keanu? I mean, I guess they did all right, but come on, it's Keanu. Anyway, rumor has it he actually was potentially going to have a role in Captain Marvel that he had to turn down to get John Wick 3 done. Hopefully they'll get him locked in for Eternal soon or something maybe even more awesome. The Keanu news wasn't the only bits of info Kevin Feige revealed this week as he offhandedly mentioned a few other things regarding the MCU, such as the fact that what Better Call Saul did for the Breaking Bad universe had some imp- inspiration on how the Black Man Widow movie would be handled, in that while it would be a prequel in some form, it would be even more enabled to stand on its own due to the things that it will reveal about the Marvel Cinematic Universe to the audience that they've not known about or knew were going on or happened up to this point. Hey, perhaps we'll finally see whatever happened with Clint and Natasha in Budapest and find out that it had some greater impact on the events of the MCU we've seen so far in ways that maybe we've never even imagined. Who knows? It's crazy and wacky. Feige also switched gears and mentioned that it seems very likely that Spider-Man and Sony's Venom will cross over at some point, but that it's entirely up to Sony and their plans on what they're doing with Venom next, which was surprising to hear given how much he has mentioned Sony's Venom would not ever be a part of the MCU. All I know is that I, and I'm sure many others, would definitely be here for it. The biggest news Kevin Feige had to share this week, though, was about Avengers Endgame, particularly that it would be getting a theatrical re-release next weekend with some extra unreleased footage. Feige said that this would not be an extended cut per se, but that it'll have a few new things at the end of the movie, particularly a deleted scene, a tribute to the late great Stan Lee, and quote, other surprises, end quote, which he would not reveal. Seems Marvel is dead set on unseating Avatar's box office record, and it won't stop until it happens. The timing couldn't be better either as the release will take place the weekend before Spider-Man Far From Home hits theaters to close out phase three of the MCU, which early reviews are already saying the film is pretty damn amazing with some end credit scenes that are absolutely epic. Speaking of when Spider-Man Far From Home hits theaters, Stranger Things, which also drops that same week, released its final trailer for season three last night, and we are pretty amped up about it. The new trailer was loaded with plenty of incredible new footage and put more focus on the supernatural darkness of the story this season. One of the creepiest parts was an unknown voice heard in the trailer that uttered the ominous words, you let us in and now you're going to have to let us stay. Seems perhaps that some of the evil from the Upside Down has found a vessel of sorts in someone in Hawkins and that whatever this evil force is will likely be bigger than anything the kids and adults have ever faced in previous seasons. Certainly seems like Eleven didn't close the gate to the Upside Down in season two as well as she had thought and the town of Hawkins will be paying for it yet again this time around. Be sure to check it out when it hits Netflix on July 4th and when you're faced with that existential crisis of binging all eight episodes or binging on burgers, hot dogs, and potato salad while watching fireworks. We're kicking off our gaming stories this week with news surrounding a big game reveal from E3 that we haven't talked much about yet, and that is Ubisoft's upcoming Watch Dogs Legion. Now, let me just start by saying the overall premise and mechanics of this game seem incredible. The fact that you're taking the Watch Dogs technology running the world around you approach, but instead of you having a set protagonist, you can literally play anyone. You want to pick that secret agent spy guy? Sure, why not? But what about the old lady that you see in the library all the time? Hell yeah! 
What about that crazy homeless dude in the park bench talking to birds? Yep, he can be a badass assassin too. The options are seemingly endless, but apparently the incredible amount of player choice doesn't just stop on who you can play, but how? Turns out Watch Dogs Legion is the dream scenario for any of you out there that loves replayability with their games. Because there is so much choice in this game that Ubisoft revealed this week, the game has 20 different versions of the script, with each script featuring, quote, different characters, different personas, different voices, and different acting, end quote. The Ubisoft team has gone to great lengths to ensure that no matter what character it is that you have selected, even if it's played by the same actor, that the voices are modulated and that there are thousands of characters character model and character head variations so that no two cutscenes look or sound the same. This all sounds incredible and the fact that I had to play at least 20 times through to see the exact same storyline play out means that most people will likely never see anything that doubles up. Pretty damn hype for this. I think it sounds absolutely amazing and I can't wait to check it out when the game launches on March 6, 2020. Now, speaking of player choice in video games, Obsidian's upcoming The Outer Worlds is a game that is literally defined by choice. And those decisions you make have some of the most impactful changes on a game that we've maybe ever seen before. As a matter of fact, you can either choose to be the hero of the story like you do, or you can side with the game's antagonists and become the literal villain of the game as well. I mean, guys in games in the past, but our end goal for those games has more or less remained static most of the time. But Obsidian is coming right out and saying, hey, you can choose to literally be the villain, and I think that sounds super rad. On top of that extensive character choice we have at our disposal, there's a massive amount of choice and consequent in consequence in the gameplay itself. Obviously, you'll be building your characters and allocating, allocating skills and attributes, but many dialogue options and interactions change depending on those stats. Do you want to see how a super smart character works? Pump intelligence. Are you interested in what the dumb dialogue options are? Dump your intelligence and stack something like strength instead. You've also got companions that, not unlike games like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, have a large amount of input and impact on your story with their own unique skills and expertise. Or you can say, screw those companions, let them croak, and if you do, you cut off valuable quest and dialogue options, but you potentially open up some new interesting ones as well. I absolutely love these kinds of games, and having this much agency as a player is going to be a total blast. Thankfully, I don't have to wait until March to play this one, as The Outer Worlds hits shelves on October 25th of this year. For a final gaming story this week, I'm sending a special shout out to all my witches and wizards out there because Harry Potter Wizards Unite has launched worldwide and we even got it a little bit early too. It was supposed to go live today, but wannabe spell casters, casters were pleasantly surprised to be able to play the much anticipated game a little bit early. Developed by Niantic, the folks behind the worldwide sensation Pokemon Go, Harry Potter Wizards Unite puts you in the robe of a witch or wizard trying to protect the, muzzle, the muggle world from powerful magic artifacts that have been scattered following an event known as the Calamity. You'll team up with friends and familiar Harry Potter faces as well to track down these items called foundables out in the world. This game feels like an absolutely fleshed out mobile RPG experience from the get-go and includes features that folks waited months or even years for in Pokemon Go, which is no surprise as Niantic most certainly took all that they learned from Pokemon Go and Ingress before it and are applying it here with Wizards Unite and apparently to great effect. You can add friends, explore the world together, track down foundables, and fend off Death Eaters and Dementors. One of the coolest new features for me is the profession mechanic, which plays out like a standard RPG skill tree that you select and gives you access to a whole new suite of skills and abilities to use while exploring the world. I'm so excited to run around my neighborhood shouting spells and vanquishing evil, so if you haven't downloaded it yet, get that iOS, Android, or Samsung device out and get to swishing and flicking fellow wizards and witches. And that's going to do it for this week's Looter News. If you love the show, let your friends know, let your family know, tell your grocer, who knows? Looter News is awesome. Additionally, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash loot crate. See all the fun content that we regularly have over there. You can also follow us on Twitch and Mixer at twitch.tv slash loot crate, mixer.com slash loot crate respectively to know when we go live for our gaming streams and other fun events and giveaways that we do on those channels. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Josh Ball. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week for an all new Looter News. Shaboy!